Hello students, in this chapter we are going to study about liberalization, privatization and globalization. We all know that in 1991 India initiated a set of new economic policy under the Prime Ministership of Mr. P. V. Narasimha Rao and Finance Minister Mr. Manmohan Singh. What was the need for new economic policy in 1991? Need was to manage the crisis of 1990s. In 1990s, India faced balance of payment crisis, poor performance of public sector leading to huge losses and a mounting fiscal deficit and a high rate of inflation. These all problems were result of the restricted policies that were adopted by Indian economy prior to 1991. In order to manage these crises, India approached World Bank and IMF and also received the help of $7 million as loan. But in return of the loan, World Bank and IMF asked India to liberalize and open up the economy by removing certain restrictions. And as a result, India introduced a set of new economic policy in 1991. NEP 1991 was initiated in two major steps. Firstly, stabilization measures which were short-term measures aimed at rectifying immediate crisis like inflation and balance of payment. Apart from this, long-term measures or structural measures were also introduced which transformed the Indian economy. These measures were liberalization, privatization and globalization. Now let's study each and every measure in detail. Starting with liberalization. Liberalization means putting an end to the restriction and open various sectors of the economy. All major sectors of economy were liberalized under NEP 1991. Let's see how liberalization measures were introduced in different sectors of Indian economy. Starting with industrial sector. Industrial sector was under so many restrictions prior, prior to 1991. These restrictions were relaxed under liberalization. That is, industrial licensing was abolished apart for few industries such as alcohol, cigarette, drugs, explosive, etc. Public sector was now de-reserved for most of the industries. Only critical industries like atomic energy railway and defense were now reserved for the public sector. Goods produced by small-scale industries have also been de-reserved. Market was allowed to determine the prices and there was a drastic reduction in government control. Now coming to financial sector reforms. We all know that RBI is the apex financial institution governing the financial sector of Indian economy. There was a change in the role of RBI from regulator to that of a facilitator. Private sector banks were also established in Indian economy after liberalization reforms of 1991. Foreign investment limit in bank was raised to 50%. There was a relaxation to open or expand the branch network of banks with certain restrictions. Foreign institutional investors like merchant bankers, mutual funds, pension agencies were allowed to invest in India now. Coming to tax reforms, there was a reduction in both direct as well as indirect taxes and the tax paying procedure was also simplified. GST that is one tax, one market and one nation was also introduced in 2017. All these steps were taken to increase the tax revenue of government. Now for an exchange reform. Rupee was devalued in year 1991 in order to encourage exports. Foreign exchange rate was now allowed to be determined by the foreign exchange market which put an end to the fixed exchange rate regime in the Indian economy. Trade and investment policy reforms. As we all know that prior to 1991, India followed an inward-looking trade policy. But in 1991, these restrictions were relaxed or removed. That is, quantitative restrictions on exports and imports were removed. There was a reduction in the tariff rate, removal of import licensing for most of the industries and also removal of export duties. All these steps were undertaken in order to encourage foreign trade for Indian economy. Coming to privatization. Privatization means shedding of ownership or management of government enterprises. 
This can be done in two ways. Firstly, by disinvestment, that is withdrawal of the government from ownership and management of public sector companies. Or secondly, by simply outright sale of public sector companies to private sector. The question that arises here is, why do we need privatization? We need privatization in order to improve the financial discipline of public sector units. As we all know that private sector is managed through better capabilities and is governed by profit earning motive. However, some public sector enterprises were performing fairly better and some leverages were given to them and they were also granted some status like Maharatna, Navratna and Mini Ratna. Coming to the third aspect of MEP, globalization. Globalization means transforming the world towards more interdependence and integration. It aims at creating a borderless world. One of the important aspects of globalization for Indian economy is outsourcing. Outsourcing means hiring regular service from an external source, mostly from the other countries which were previously provided within the countries. India is a hub of outsourcing for many fields like legal advice, computer service, advertisement, accountancy, banking, music recording, film editing, book transcription, clinical advice, teaching and so on. What makes India a favorable outsourcing destination? Firstly, modern telecommunication which is creating a borderless world, cheap labor and that to educated and English speaking. Thus, India has a huge potential to earn from globalization. Coming to the organization which is facilitating globalization throughout the world, World Trade Organization founded in 1995 as a successor of GATT. What are the functions of WTO? Basically, WTO aims at removing restrictions from trade which were imposed by different countries. Thus, it is facilitating international trade by advocating reduction in tariff and non-tariff barriers. It also aims at establishing a rule-based trade regime and ensure optimum utilization of world resources. However, there are questions raised on Indian economy as a member of WTO. India is an active member of WTO and abides by its rules and regulation. But many economists question this membership as India being a developing country is not getting much benefit from being the member of WTO as major volume of trade occurs between developed nations. Developed nations still impose tariff and non-tariff barriers which have been reduced by developing countries like India. Thus, a fair play is not there with WTO and that is why India being a member of WTO has been criticized. Now a question for you people is what do you think that should India continue to be a member of WTO or not? Now let's have a look at the critical appraisal of NEP 1991. NEP 1991 was actually a savior for Indian economy. It pulled out Indian economy from huge financial crisis. However, there were certain positive and certain negative aspects related to NEP 1991 as everything has good as well as bad aspects. Coming to achievements first. Because of NEP 1991, our GDP growth rate increased and it was around 7-8% to 8 per annum. There was a drastic increase in foreign direct investment and foreign institutional investment due to restriction on due to relaxation in the restriction on export and import there was an increase in the foreign exchange reserves now india became a successful exporter of many goods such as automobiles software engineering goods etc which were earlier imported there was a control on inflation as well However, there were certain negative effects such as removal of subsidies from the agriculture gave a setback to the agricultural sector. Rather, no investment was done for agricultural sector during this period. Industrial slowdown was there due to competition from cheap imports. 
though GDP increased, but there was an increase in the unemployment as well. Disinvestment was done at an undervalued rate. Though we reduced the tax rate and also simplified the procedure, but there was a decline in the tax revenue and welfare spending as a result. But overall, we can say that NEP 1991 changed the way Indian economy think. If Indian economy will take right steps to rectify these problems, then we can go ahead and be the superpower very soon. Thank you and have a good day.